Hello and howdy everyone, my name is Alyssa Nichol and welcome back to Angular and Kendo UI Unite. In today's video, we're going to be going over a to-do application that I created and we're going to be fleshing it out a bit more and we're going to be using uh, Kendo UI buttons and a Kendo UI input to just simply make this to-do application and then in the next few videos, we'll add on some extras um, to snazz it up a bit. So I've already created the to-do component for our application. I'm not going to regenerate that. Um, I'll just walk you through the steps that we did and that way we can have a bit more time to spend in the markup. So I generated with ng generate C or component um, this to-do component. And then once inside of that, I went ahead and I created a to-dos um, array and it has an object, which right now, it just has the item or like the name of each to-do. And I also have done an add to-do and a remove to-do function. And so I'm literally grabbing the to-do item and sticking it in a new array, as well as using the spread operator on the array to spread it out inside of the array next to the new one. Um, and setting all of that equal to this dot to do's. And then of course, erasing the input value so that after you're done typing and you press enter and it adds the new to do item, it also clears out that input value. Um, and then remove to do, we'll just splice that off of the array. So if we go back to our app component, we can see here that we're not using our button control panel right now. So we're just using this to do component. And I have added um, some custom styles that will come into play here in a minute. So the first thing we want to do um, is create a div um, and that's just going to wrap things and it will actually come very much in handy in our next video for animations. Then we're going to create an H1 um, and I said, what good shall I do today in it? Um, of course, you can just call it to do app or something boring like that. Um, and then next in the markup, we had the input. And so before we can actually use our Kendo input, uh, we need to use ng add with that. So we would go ahead and open up our terminal. And we're going to use this ng add command. And I will make the text so super large that one could hardly fail to read. Perfect. So we're saying ng add at progress slash kendo dash angular inputs. And we're going to go ahead and do that. Now we're going to go ahead and close this since we don't need it anymore. And we're going to create our input type of text. Sure sounds good to me. Um, but we're also going to want to give it our kendo text box attribute. And let's do a placeholder as well. And these are going to get a bit long. So we're just going to do it, do it to it like that. And then this one will be placeholder. Um, add a to do item, please. And then of course, um, the custom styles, which I think I said this one was new uh, to do input is what I called it. And if we go ahead and go over to the SCSS, yes, we can see that I'm giving some new to do input styles. Um, let's see, the other things will be to bind. Um, let's go ahead before we bind on key up enter. Um, and check it out, and there it is. We've got our H1, we've got our styles with our input. It's looking so nice. Um, and um, next up, we want to go ahead and bind on key up um, the add to do items. So that is going to look a little bit like this. We'll literally say key up, and we can say um, on dot enter, which is super handy, thanks Angular. Um, and we're going to add to do is what I called it. And then inside of that, we need to now create, I think they're called template variables. And so we're gonna say hashtag <laughs> and literally whatever we wanna call our template variable. And so at this point, we can actually get the value off of that template variable. So we can say um, input item or 
pass in item input or item input dot value uh, bum, 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 into our add to do. Now, if we went ahead and tested this buddy out, we wouldn't be able to see anything because we're not actually showing any of the to do's yet on the screen. So for the next step, um, I thought it'd be fun to use kendo buttons. Uh, so we're going to create a, another div and this is not on the right, there we go. And this one is going to use ng if, and we'll say basically if there are any to-do items, which in this case uh, is an array called to-dos. So if there's any to-do items, like make the rest of this HTML possible. We'll also give it a class of, I think we said list group, whoops, there we go. And inside of this, we're going to just go ahead and create a button like we've done before. And we're going to give it, of course, a kendo button attribute and boop, type equals button. And I'm gonna go to a new line, okay. And I believe I gave this a class of to do. So if we go back over to the SCSS, I did give it a class of to do. And I even have some special things happening on hover. Um, and so if we go ahead and just check this out, um, I'm basically telling it to display flex, have a certain padding. I want to align the content to center. We'll get back to this commented out line in a later video. Um, I'm also setting the height to 50 pixels, um, taking away any background or border that it was being given or border radius. And um, I want the text color to be white, overflow hidden please, and a transition. So um, I would like to bum, 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 go back. So we gave <clears throat> the class to do, and I think we have one more thing to do in this button and that is create an ng4 and we want to loop through the to-dos at this point point. Um, and so we're going to say let to do of to-dos and then we can also grab the index um, it's like index as i yes um, and then let's go ahead and put this back up there even though it's a long line inside of our button now um, we're going to want to utilize the to-do item that we just looped through to-dos to get. And so I'm just gonna create a span. And that span, um, actually we'll get to its click in a minute. Um, first, I just want to show you that we are actually doing to-do dot item. Um, so we're utilizing the to-do that we're looping through and we're showing it off in this span. And so I think if we go back over, <gasps> Oh, we got it. We have our to-do items. They're showing up in the list. And on hover, you can see the background color is changing and transitioning. Um, yay, right? And if you notice, when hovering over the text specifically, you get this nice crossed out, um, which I'm doing here with on span hover, text decoration line through. And so um, what I'm trying to indicate there with that is that you can essentially click to remove the item from the to-do list. And so um, as one would expect, we're going to bind the click to remove to-do, which I think we did, yes, lowercase like that. And it's going to want two things. It's gonna want the to-do that it needs to remove and the index of that to-do, which of course we got with index as I. So if we go back over, hovering, click, and it removes it from the list. Do another one, awesome. And if we go ahead and add to-dos, which we didn't get to see earlier, add a new to-do. It works, perfect. Okay, let's go back to the TypeScript file real quick and just double, double, double check, double check these functions. So again, um, we are rebuilding this array like so in add to do and clearing the input value and then remove to do. We're literally just using the to do item. Oh, actually we're not even, we don't even need to pass that. I love that about VS code BT dubs. Um, I think in a previous iteration I was using to do and right now we're literally just using the index so we can go back over to the remove to do call and just pass index and to prove that we're still working uh, refresh just to show it there we go and it's still working perfect um, so one last thing uh, that I actually added 
That was a nice touch. Um, whenever you finish your to-do list, there's nothing there. And so the empty to-do list looks kind of silly. <laughs> and so I thought it would be a nice touch to go ahead and add one last div or dib, depending on if you can type or not, um, <laughs> with an ng if that is checking uh, to-dos.length if it's equal to zero. And basically, if there are no to-dos, we want to go ahead, oh, and I have a class for this one too, because we want it to look pretty. Um, and I think I call this one finished list. And I said fin here, and I think that's all we did. Let's double check. So now if we cross off all of these items, yes, we get finished. And if we add in something back, it goes away, perfect. So. Um, it's so super fun uh, to use the <laughs> to use these Kindo components um, and then customize them, and I just love the heck out of Angular as well. So it's a it's a powerful combination. Um, something that I'm really passionate about is animations and using UX in motion. And so in the next video in this series, I'm actually going to go ahead and add some animations, some Angular animations to what we already have in the to-do app um, to give the users some clues about what's going on and um, to kind of keep a spatial mental model going. And so join us for that next episode and happy coding everyone.